Welcome to the Zach's Roundtable Review, a discussion of current events affecting investors as well as other topics of financial interest featuring the analysts and editors of Zach's.com. There's been some chatter on the street lately that this market may be approaching a top, but what would it look like if a market top appeared in front of you? We're going to see if our experts can clue us in on what they would look for when they're trying to determine signs of a market top. Research Director Shiraz Meehan, Equity Strategists Tracy Reinick, and Todd Bunton join us this time around. Todd, I'm going to start with you because you're pretty definite here about some, some hallmarks that you'd actually be looking for. There's a couple of them. Change in fundamentals like earnings or the economy, price gains that exceed the fundamentals, right? Yeah. Right. And, and I think the latter one, price gains that exceed the fundamentals, we saw that all throughout 2013. Yeah. Um, that, that has me a little uneasy. But if, if you do look at, at valuations, relative valuation, it's not, uh, not bubble levels, I don't think. Not, you know, certainly not where we were in the dot-com bubble. But, but I, I do think that the price gains we've seen over the last you know, year, year and a half now, have just gotten a, a little bit stretched compared to the improvement we've seen in fundamentals. And if you look at, at recent fundamentals, like the economy, we, right. stu we still see sluggish economic data. Now, some of that can be attributed to the weather, but um, if you look at earnings too, earnings season was okay, but the forward guidance was weak. So estimates have been coming down. That's not stuff that typically drives stocks higher. So that does have me a little worried here, but are we near a top? I don't think so. I think we still have a little bit of room to run as long as the Fed's being accommodative. Right. Shiraz, let's talk about earnings here for a minute uh, as in regard to, to what this uh, conversation centers on. The once buoyant uh, earnings expectations have uh, kind of dimmed lately. So does that uh, cause you to question maybe how much momentum is left in this rally? I thought nobody listened to my comments on that front <laughs> anymore because I've been, uh, I've been doing the, uh, the wolf is coming thing for so long. Uh, yes, uh, the, the, the earnings picture has been uh, weak for, for a while, and by weak I don't mean the total earnings are low, uh, but by weak I mean that estimates for the forward periods have steadily been coming down, and that's been happening for more than a year. Uh, it, and we are strong believers in the power of estimate revisions. Right. Now, for at the individual company level, it always translates into the near-term price for the stock. But in the aggregate, it's not as close a relationship. And that's what we've been seeing in the market, that for more than a year now, uh, estimates uh, would start out on the high side. And as the period comes through, they would come down. And we are seeing an acceleration in that trend uh, for Q1 and for 2014. So uh, in early January, expectations for Q1 earnings growth uh, were about 2 2.5%. Two and, mm -hmm. uh, and they are down to about a uh, uh, decline of 1.5% to 2% now in Q1. Mm -hmm. and, and we have seen similar trend for, uh, for 2014 as well. So bottom line, yes, it does cause you to question how much momentum is left. It has been causing me to question the momentum in the market, and it continues to cause me to question uh, the momentum in the market. But this is a momentum-driven market, and uh, uh, it, it, will, it will remain in place till it doesn't. Okay. Tracy? Uh, it's not driven by earnings. No. Tracy, uh, you say tops generally happen when no one is looking. Well, it's true. <laughs> so that mean, does that mean if we don't look anymore that it'll well, just happen? Well, I mean, we're all, you know, is this it? Is this the end of the rally? And right. so it's probably not because we're all obsessed with is this it? Yeah. But one thing I am watching is the small caps because those have really rallied even more than the large and the, and the mediums. And you You're know, looking for that big blow off, though. Well, you yeah. say that's one sign, blow off heading into the, the final, right? Well, yeah, I think we do have like, you know, where everybody just gets in and we have this kind of craziness at the end before. But that doesn't mean we're not going to have pullbacks like we had in January, which was a 6% pullback. Right. We could definitely have that even if the moment, overall momentum of the market continues. Yeah. But the small caps are kind of lagging now. Even, even just in the last few sessions, it's been the larger caps that have kind of taken the lead. And that makes me a little nervous because that means people are getting maybe a little more conservative. But you haven't seen a total break in, in what the small caps are doing yet. But it is something to watch. Okay. So uh, does that mean that we're not going to see any market madness here? We've got a couple of weeks left to the month. Well, we could see more volatility, like yeah. Tracy said. But no, I'm not expecting a big you know, 30 madness. to 40% correction. No like, madness. You know, okay. just, or, <laughs> or on the upside either, right? Even I, after the uh, FOMC meeting here wraps up uh, tomorrow? Yeah, I don't think 
there are any major surprises expected from the FOMC. They'll continue to do the taper. Uh, there no signs is, of a rate hike? Uh, no. The, the, the key question is how they get away from the specific thresholds, mm -hmm. uh, like on the unemployment rate, on the inflation front, particularly the unemployment rate, where it's, their threshold is 6.5%. Mm -hmm. We are at 6.7% already. Uh, their need is to remove that and talk us into buying into something which is more vague and qualitative yeah. uh, without disturbing this whole uh, happy scenario. Uh, perhaps Janet Yellen is better th at this than, uh, uh, than the previous guy was, but that's, that's about the only uh, question <laughs> over there. We'll find out on the afternoon of March 19th, because yeah. this right. is her first meeting, her right. first her press first, conference. Right. That's right. right? Yep. So we'll see what her demeanor actually is coming out of <laughs> this first meeting. That's right. Um, the China situation at some point is going to become problematic for uh, us here, whether it's for our economy or for our market. Uh, you think it's already become problematic. I think it is. Todd yeah. says China's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy says uh, investors don't seem to care yet, right? They haven't cared until maybe a little bit in the last few sessions, but then they care for maybe like one session because there's some news, bad economic news that's really coming out, and then they blow it off again. So mm -hmm. until there's actually the financial crisis, which I do think is coming, happens, they're blowing it off. And, and they will until, because you don't believe what comes out of China. No, I don't believe, wise. yeah, I don't believe most of their data, but we are getting some of these stories which have apparently been confirmed. There was one bond default um, right. a couple weeks ago. It was only $14 million bond default, but it was the first time anyone was allowed to default. And then just a couple days ago, there was another, a uh, housing developer that supposedly is going bankrupt with about a half a billion dollars on their books and some of the banks are involved. I'm sure there's some wealth management product involved in that. Mm -hmm. And that's another one that is unclear what's going to happen. But these are starting to become, I get kind of worried when every other day, you know, the media is reporting on some things blowing up. This isn't normal. Like yeah. that's not how you want to run your economy. So I do think slowly, you know, things are spiraling maybe out of control of what they can do in Beijing. And Traz, you've uh, actually noted that uh, some of the big multinationals doing business in China, have, this has become problematic. That's it's been right. reflected in their earnings. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we saw with, uh, with, with IBM, with Cisco, with some of the other tech companies. Now, we have had this, uh, this NSA spying related kind of issues kind of uh, weighing on some of the American based tech firms too. Uh, but China is a big growth market, has been a big growth market for a lot of the S&P 500 companies, and they have invested heavily in that market. And if we see a major slowdown there, uh, there will be a net negative on the margin for, uh, for, for, for these companies. China yeah. is a mess. I think that sums <laughs> it up <laughs> beautifully. Yeah. Thank you all for that. And coming up, we are going to have their top picks. You don't want to miss them. Stick with us. They're in the next segment.